Welcome to Doctor Is Saying Stuff. I'm Dr. Alok Patel, and today we're chatting about genital herpes. Let's get into it. Now, genital herpes is caused by the herpes simplex virus, either herpes simplex virus type one or type two. Now, HSV type two is more commonly associated with genital herpes and HSV one more commonly associated with causing oral herpes, but HSV-1 can also cause genital herpes. And the CDC estimates that there are about 570,000 new genital herpes infections in the United States in any given year. That's a lot. Genital herpes is a sexually transmitted disease, so you can guess how it spreads. HSV lesions themselves are small blisters or vesicles that can spread infection through casual contact. So infection can spread through contact with mucosal secretions or genital or oral secretions. So someone can contract genital herpes through sex or anal sex or even oral sex if somebody has oral herpes. That can also spread and cause a genital infection. And infections can even spread from someone who has no symptoms and doesn't even know that they have genital herpes. Oftentimes, symptoms may appear really mild or someone may be completely asymptomatic. Now, noticeable symptoms, that telltale rash of genital herpes may look like small blisters or vesicles that appear around the genital, rectum, or mouth. And sometimes these vesicles will actually turn into ulcers, become painful, and take days or even weeks to heal. Some people may have burning when they try to pee or a tingling sensation or nerve pain. For some people, they can also get flu-like symptoms such as a headache, body aches, and fever. In recurrent infections, People may actually feel these flu-like symptoms before an outbreak of a rash, and research suggests that with progressive infections, symptoms may become more mild. People with weakened immune systems from chemotherapy or HIV, for example, are at particular risk. An example of these more serious complications include meningitis or inflammation of the lining of the brain, infection of the internal organs, or even herpetic lesions in other areas such as the eye or the finger. It's also important to note that people who have ulcerations or breaks in their skin from genital herpes are at an increased risk of contracting other STDs such as HIV. Special note regarding pregnancy and newborn babies. Newborn herpetic infections are devastating. And pediatrician talking is one of the worst complications of genital herpes. This is why all pregnant individuals should be asked about potential herpes symptoms or risk factors. This should be asked before they give birth. Sometimes herpetic lesions will actually be present during labor, so doctors will perform a C-section to make sure the newborn baby doesn't come in contact with any of the lesions. Diagnosis involves a doctor asking you relevant questions about your symptoms, about your sexual history, anything that you've noticed that might be odd, and then doing a physical exam to literally look at the blisters and potentially getting a sample from those blisters. In some cases, a doctor may order a blood test. Now, a diagnosis can also be tricky because remember, not everyone with genital herpes will have blisters or symptoms at all. Sadly, there is no cure for genital herpes. There are antivirals out there that can shorten how long you have symptoms and in some cases prevent flare-ups. Prevention is all about safe sex practices. It's important to have an honest conversation with any and all sexual partners you have and refrain from having sex if you or your partner has genital herpes and active lesions. Now, long-term monogamous trusted relationships can reduce your risk, but this is the real world. and Not everyone has that set up. So it's important for you to have the right information as an individual so you can make the best choices. An important note that condoms aren't 100% effective because someone may have infectious lesions outside of the covered area. I know genital herpes is a heavy topic that not everyone wants to have a conversation about, but we need to. So I hope you feel a little bit more empowered and that I've demystified genital herpes a little bit to a small degree. And with that, I bid farewell from Doctors Saying Stuff. Please like, subscribe, and follow this channel for more. Stay healthy, everyone.